to jive with the alternative, bringing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of his kingdom, directly into the comfort of your home. Thank you very much for allowing me in your home on a weekly basis. We appreciate your love. The mystery or the wisdom behind communion in Psalm 23. Um, most of us know Psalm 23. It's just six verses. And uh, it starts with the Lord is my shepherd. If you look at that psalm, the six verses in that psalm contain everything. Everything you will ever need at the Lord's table. Everything that we will all need, ever need at the Lord's table. And we must understand that when we come to the Lord's table, communion is not an ordinary meal. It's not just the wafer or the fruit juice or the orange juice or the wine, whatever emblem is presented to us, it is much more than that. In verse 5, it says, you, O oh God, prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Can I have a bit of volume on this? He said, he prepared a table before me. No, not from this, from the speaker, please. He present a prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Now, we, we're not looking at the enemy part. We're looking at the first part. God prepare a table table before me. He prepared a table before me. The table he's talking about here is the Holy Communion. The table David is making reference, in, reference to is the communion table. Now some people call it Holy Communion. Some people call it the Lord's table. And yes, it's called communion because it's a time of sharing. Sharing bread, sharing drink, that is why the word communion comes from. The word communion is to share together. And some people call it not only communion, some call it Eucharist because it is an expression of thanksgiving. There's nothing wrong to say Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion. Um, some of us have thought because it's from the other church where we come from, we shouldn't be using that word. No, the word Eucharist simply means thanksgiving. So, some call it Holy Communion, some call it the Lord's Table. Yes, it's the Lord's Table because God sat down at that table. Jesus sat down at that table for supper. So, it's important to understand that in our lives. It can be Holy Communion, it can be the Lord's Table, it can be the Holy Eucharist. And some... They call it, um, why do they call it rather the Lord's Supper? It's because it's, it's, it's dinner time. Supper means dinner. And the Lord was sitting down there with them to eat the supper with his disciple before his death on the cross. No matter how we call it, we must never, never lose the significance of what it is all about. No matter what you call it, the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion, the Communion Table, the Lord's Table, the Holy Eucharist, you must, we must never, never lose sight of what it is all about. Communion is a mystery, but if it's misunderstood and not appropriate the way it should be done, it loses its value. It loses the power that is in that communion. It loses the, 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 the purpose of God behind it. And we must understand that we don't approach the Lord's table with a common eye. Or like we say, we do it traditional or traditionally. It's never to be done commonly or traditionally. The communion is a miracle meal, and it's given to us to provide, to produce, I think the word is produce, to produce something definite in our lives. And we're going to look at that today. First of all, we must understand why it is called a mystery. 
Why do we call it mystery? It's mystery because all those emblems that God gave us in the New Testament, uh, we don't have, number one, full understanding of it. You know, I, I, I was talking about the washing of the feet. Peter did not understand why God will have to wash his feet. And he said, why do you want to wash my feet? I mean, you are God, you are holy God. I mean, and the conversation and the dialogue went for some time. And Jesus said, listen, you don't understand why I'm washing your feet. It's in your Bible. Amen? Amen? But if I don't wash your feet, you don't have any part in me. So that's why it's a mystery. Mystery are the secret of God that is given to all so that we can establish our dominion on earth. This is why communion is also a mystery. To understand this, we need to go back to the Passover record in the Bible. When we talk about the Passover, it's when the God's children, God's people, Israel, who are going to be delivered from Egypt. Bondage. Egypt represents the world, and bondage represents sin. And sin is what brings sickness. And the whole world is sick today. The mind is sick. The only place where there is safety and salvation is in the church, is in Christ Jesus. Can I hear amen? If anyone is not born again, he is sick. He is a sinner. And he will suffer everything that the world suffers. But if you are born again and you are you understand the mystery behind the communion. Whatever the world is suffering will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So we understand that when the, the night that they were going to leave Egypt, listen to this, this is significant now. God told them to kill a lamb. And he told them with the lamb's blood, they must dip something in that blood, and they must spray the blood on their lentils, on the doorposts. The reason behind that is there is going to be an angel tonight that is called the death angel, angel of destruction. When that angel passes by, wherever he sees the blood, he will continue to go. He will not touch them. And that's why it is called the Passover. The Passover lamb in Exodus chapter 12, chapter 11, 12, 13, 14, but particularly in Exodus chapter 12. So in the New Testament, Jesus was giving us this, or, or he was given to us as the Passover lamb. It was not the lamb that was sacrificed in the Old Testament. It was him now providing himself as the lamb. No wonder John the Baptist saw him in John chapter 1, verse, verse 12, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. I'm going to ask you to, I want you to notice the sin of the world. Without sin, there is no sickness. Do you agree with me? Without sin, there is no sickness. It is sin that brought sickness into the world. Now, what did Jesus come to take away from your life? Sin. If sin is taken away from your life, then sickness has no place in your body. Can I hear amen? I said, can I hear amen? If you believe the sickness you had until you come here today, today you've been delivered from it. Let me hear you say amen. It says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Jesus became the Lamb for us, and this is why our deliverance is guaranteed. Our salvation is guaranteed. Healing and health is guaranteed through the mystery of communion. Mark chapter 14. And in verses 22 all the way down to 24, Jesus was, they were here, and, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread. What did he take? 
He blessed the bread and he broke it. Just follow me. And gave what? What did he take? What did he break? What did he give to them? And he said, take it. This is no longer bread. This is my body. It's in your Bible. I want to show you the mystery of communion. I want to show you that understanding what you are doing change your perspective, your paradigm shift, your understanding shift. And once your understanding shift in the spiritual realm, you are bound to receive every benefit and every blessing in that communion. Amen? It says, it took bread. When it took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it into or into how many pieces, and he gave unto them, and he said, this, what you are eating, is no longer bread, but it is my body. Verse, 20, verse 23. And in verse 20, he took the cup, that is the wine or the fruit of the vine, whatever emblem is used today, it could be water, it could be anything. Just don't drink uh, whiskey. Because some people will say, because pastor said it could be anything. Now you go and take whiskey, and you say you want to do communion. God will help you. He took wine, the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they drank it. Let's look at verse 24, which is awesome. And he, he said unto them, this is my blood. He took wine. He took the fruit of the vine, whatever that may be, and he blessed it. He gave it to them. He said, this is my blood. Now look up here. I give you my flesh to eat, and I give you my blood to drink. And he went on and he says, it is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for your sin. Remission of sin. King, uh, new King James said it's shed for many. I just want to give you the understanding of what this communion is all about. When he said, take drink, Jesus did not say drink wine. That's what we call it today. Drink the fruit of the vine. That's what we call it today. Drink Ribena. That's what we call it today. Whatever we call it, he said, drink my blood. Drink my blood. Eat my flesh. A few years ago, somebody, I, was, I think I was in UK and I was teaching about this. And somebody told me, are you referring to the flesh of Jesus or it's just a symbol? Now you see how the mind works. I said, you see how the mind works. You know, for somebody to even be going into that, you know, we cannot be referring to the blood of Jesus and the flesh because people will think we are cannibals. How many of you have said the truth at some point in your life and people think you are crazy? Does that make you crazy? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. And we must understand mystery is the revelation, the secret of God for your dominion. It's very important for us to understand. So, what I want to, us to understand today is that the mystery in the flesh and in the blood, the mystery in the flesh and in the blood, in John chapter 6, verse 51, this is important now. John chapter 6, verse 51, Jesus said this, I am the living bread. He wants to explain it to them now. He said, take bread and eat. The bread you are eating is my flesh. And it says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone that eats of this bread, the living bread, will live forever. And the bread that I'm giving unto you is what? My flesh. So, don't go out there trying to be politically correct or... Uh, religiously correct. Go out there and speak and demonstrate, or when you come to the table this morning, you come with this understanding you are partaking of the flesh of Jesus. Can I hear amen? 
you are partaking of the blood of Jesus. Can I hear amen? Because he said so. How many followers of Jesus are here in the house? If you are followers of Jesus, he said, do what I tell you to do. Jesus is not Lord over our mind and Lord over our soul and Lord over our body and we push his word aside. A brother was explaining Skepta to us earlier on. You know, it's, it's an authority. It's a symbol of authority. If a king put up the Skepta, everybody quiet, bow down because law is going to be decreed. And Jesus said, a servant is not greater than his master. But it's not, it, we, we're, not, we're not focusing on that this morning. We're focusing on understanding the mystery of communion. In verse 55 and 56, look at what he said here. For my flesh is food indeed. For my flesh is food indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. Now the emphasis in this verse 55 is no longer on bread. It's now on his flesh. And now on his blood. The flesh or my flesh is food indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. Then in verse 56, it said, Anyone that eats my flesh and drink my body abides in me, and I will abide in him. No word there of bread again. He started to introduce to them, and he said, Take this bread. If you take this bread, eat it, you eat my flesh. If you take this cup, drink it, you drink my blood. And from then on, he never refers to it again as bread. He refers to it as my flesh, as my blood. That's the mystery of communion. Are you following me? I said, are you following me? So it empowers us. One of the secrets and mystery of communion is it empowers us to live, listen to this, like Christ. Ah, Pastor, how can we live like Christ? Can we read verse 56 again? Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I what? In him. In another word, it empowers us, soul, spirit, and body, to live like Christ. Two days ago, uh, Braise was praying here, and he told us, if you say you follow Jesus and you believe in Jesus, then we must be like Jesus. He said, if Jesus, there was no record of Jesus taken to hospital once in his lifetime. Did you read about that? Now listen to me, listen to me. I want to say something here. When he said that, you know, I prayed a prayer. I said, Lord, all the days of my life, if Mata Day has to de depend on me, all the nurses and doctors will be fired. But hospital is not meant for the children of God. Do you know that? Hospital is meant for the people of the world. Jesus had disciples. There was not one record of any one of them sick. One. 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 There was not one record of any one of them. The wife of Peter was sick. The mother, the mother of the wife of Peter was sick. Jesus went there and he raised him up. There's somebody at the door. So we must understand that communion, communion brings about a realization for us to live like Christ. So that our mind can be sound, our body can be healed, and our spirit can continuously be attentive to what God has to say. Jesus said, as my father speaks, so I speak. We constantly hear God. Our mind must be effectual and, and be ready to hear whatever God has to say. So the mystery of communion is empowers us to live like Christ. Therefore, communion is a miracle food. Communion is not an ordinary food. It's a miracle meal for endless triumph in our health department. 
anyone here today that is suffering any sickness or any disease, today, in the name of Jesus, healing comes to you. As you partake of this communion by faith, you are taking the exact precise prescription for that situation in your life. In the name of Jesus. Jesus said, anyone who eats my flesh, I will abide in him and, my, and, and he, he will abide in me. Now, let's look at what this does to them in the Old Testament. In Psalm 105, verse 37, remember I started by reading Psalm 23 in the Old Testament. Let's look at what happened to them in the Old Testament when they were trusting in the blood of the lamb, physical lamb. What happened to them? I think it's important for us to, see, to know that. If I see what happened to them when Jesus was not there and they are looking for the coming Savior and what happened to them, what about now that the Savior had come? They were operating under the shadow, but now we are operating with reality. It says he brought them out of Egypt, out of the world, with silver and gold. Now the second part is what I want you to see. There was not one feeble among them. Old Testament. Every feebleness in your body is going today. I said every feeble, feebleness and sickness in your body is departing today in the name of Jesus. This is what Passover did to them. Look up here. 40 years in the wilderness. Some of you are not 40 here yet. And then you wake up in the morning, you're still yawning at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Your body is weak. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Nothing. I in. I'm tired. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And you are not 40 years yet. And these people walk 40 years in the wilderness. Listen to me. There was not one sick report. Can God do that today? I said, can God do that today? Will God do that today? Can he do it for you? That is what we are talking about. What was their secret? They ate the manna that came from heaven. Every morning, they wake up in the morning and God give them manna. And Jesus said, I am the manna that came from heaven. It takes your faith. It takes your understanding the mystery of commun communion is not just the loaf and the drink, and we have taken it 20 years, 30 years, we just go there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and you say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, till today. Each time you approach the table, each time you approach, you must come to the table with this understanding. I'm eating the flesh of Jesus. I'm drinking the blood of Jesus. And listen to me. Whatever cannot be found in Jesus will never be found in you. I thought that we hear a louder amen. amen. Whatever cannot be found in Jesus will never be found in you from today in Jesus' name. Now, it's important to know that communion brings strength into our life. What does strength connote in the Bible? Strength connotes health. Strength connote health and vitality. Health and vitality. At the age of 50, at the age of 60, you're still going strong like Joshua, like Caleb. And communion is the secret. Joshua and Caleb, they possessed the land at the age of 40-ish. By the time he was 80, he went back to Joshua, Caleb. He said, when I was with Lord, my servant, the Lord Moses, I mean, the Lord's servant Moses, I possess the land. Now I'm 80. My strength is the same when I was 40. Kariabas Kondea. At 80 years, Moses was still climbing the mountain and he was still coming down. He did that twice. 80. Some of us will say, let's go to work. By the time we get five minutes' work, we need oxygen. We need uh, Brother Ezekiel and. Uh, and Sister Dorothy to provide us with oxygen. What's wrong with us? Because we don't understand the mystery behind communion. 
it provides, it gives vi strength, vitality, and health. So when you partake this morning, you are understanding that you are partaking the strength of Christ. Say amen. The strength of Christ. Moses, Elijah, wake up, eat. This food you are eating, it will take you for 40 days and it will take you for, it's a spiritual meal. Amen? I said it's a spiritual meal. And we must eat it with that understanding. I said we must eat it with that understanding. This is why if you are a child of God and understand this mystery of Holy Communion, you cannot be called sick and you will not be called sick again in Jesus' name. Number three, what else does it do for us? The Lord's table also, this is very important now, is sharing divine insight. And I personally like this. Honestly, I personally like this. If you give me Luke's gospel, chapter 14, verse uh, 31, I believe. The Bible says, when Jesus rose from the dead, 24, when Jesus rose from the dead, he took communion with his disciples. And among many things, he said, when they ate, their eyes were open. The eyes is talking about their brothers and sisters. It's not their physical eyes because they were not blind. It's talking about their mind. It's talking about their understanding. It's talking about illumination into their mind. Let me, let me say this. It's basically talks, talking about it translates his mind into their mind. Pastor, this is too big for me. Just look at Philippians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. The Bible says we have, what is it? The mind of Christ. Not a mind of Christ. Not some mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. It is your faith in partaking this that changes your story. I had a story as I want to close of a young girl who traveled to Jerusalem with their church. And I want you to listen to this because this is going to happen in the life of somebody today. I said, what this testimony, somebody will give it also in their life in Jesus' name. Some of you have been sitting down here and you've been carrying a particular disease for many years. 2021, you're going to sing so long, bye-bye. Bye-bye to that sickness. Bye-bye to that disease. This lady arrived in Jerusalem. She was going for the tour in Israel to go to see the Holy Land. And as soon as she arrived, they came out of the airport. She collapsed and she fainted and she died. She wasn't married then. Her pastor was there. Her pastor was telling this story. Um... But our pastor has gone ahead of them. To, they were in Jordan, or for example, I don't know now. And the pastor was in uh, maybe another town, Jerusalem. I don't know how far. So they tried to reach the pastor. The phone is switched off, blah, blah, blah. Because they were in groups. One we go today. The other one we go to this, the place where the previous one went yesterday. So the next group we go there so that they can go in, bad, in, in groups. And the pastor did not know that this person was in the hospital. They rushed her to the hospital. And then after three days, the doctor said, listen, the brains might be damaged because the brain is not responding. Then they reached the pastor on the fourth day. And he said, I'm in this place. For me to come back there, da, 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 just pray for them. He said, anyway, to cut the long story short, he went there on the sixth day. Or the fourth, the fourth day they reach him, the fifth day, yes. Everybody have prayed, all the brothers have prayed, they, they, da, 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 no, nothing, and the doctor told them, you know, they said, don't do anything, don't leave him on wire. You know, for those of you who are medically sound, you know what I'm talking about. Until the pastor come, they just want the pastor to come. So the pastor said he got there on the fifth day. And he looked at the situation. You know, the Bible said, watch and pray. Correct? The pastor said, I couldn't watch. 
wires and gadgets everywhere. Beep, 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 beep. He said, what the Lord laid on his heart is that the people around there should take communion on her behalf. So he said, listen, do we have bread here? They said, no, they went to buy bread and they went to buy the fruit of the vine. There were about seven or eight of them and they shared the communion on behalf of that sister. Jesus, you said, anyone that eats you eat life and shall never die. That was a statement. We eating this communion because we understand the mystery behind it. And we speak life back into this individual. They ate, they thank God. They, he said maybe it took five, ten minutes. He doesn't know, but short time. They walked there out there and he told them, Don't cry, don't cry. You know, when you see people who don't cry. He said if his own eyes were sobbing as well. Because it's a lovely sister in the church, serving in the church. Two days after, she got up. And she said, why am I here? I came for a trip in Israel. Her mind was restored. The doctor said this word according to her pastor. This must be a miracle. What's the secret there? The communion understanding the mystery of communion. I'm going to close there here. <clears throat> and as I close here, I want you to understand this. There are some of you sitting down here, or maybe you are watching online, that you will never make reference to that sickness in your body again. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to